Coming up right now, R&B crooner Usher just scored a major gig. Why he's decided to share the spotlight with Kim Kardashian. Also coming up, Vanna White signs a new deal as co-host of Wheel of Fortune. How much she'll now be getting to light up those letters. <laughs> a little bit later on. The site formerly known as Twitter may soon start charging in X amounts. Uh -huh. Why Elon Musk says this is going to be a game changer. Daily Flash starts right now. Get ready for trending news and entertainment. This is Daily Flash with your host, Andrea Jackson and Mitch English. The fun starts right now. This is Daily Flash. everyone, I'm Andrea Jackson. Hi, I'm Mitch English, welcoming you to an hour of Daily Flash. We're gonna have some good stuff set up for you today. Got a lot of cool folks we're gonna be talking to, especially getting ready for the holiday season. You might wanna look at your budget. We got some great ideas that's gonna make sure that the end of the year will be the best part. Yeah, also uh, Google Bard. We got some oh, right, info yeah. on Google Bard, which is Google's version of Chat GPT. This is interesting. Yeah. Uh, the things that you're doing, a lot of questions yeah. are, are up in the air because of yes. uh, this new service. Um, okay, so you know we like to kind of find like the odd jobs on this show. Certainly, we talked yeah. about the Taylor Swift job uh -huh. and the Beyonce job. USA Today just came out with another job. Margarita tester job. <laughs> Done. Yeah. Matt, Matt, Done. we've lost Matt too. Matt, Matt, to USA Today. And it takes Done. place in Vegas. Done. Okay. And it pays $4,000. Wow, no kidding. I'll figure out the rest. Four, four I'll grand. Out the rest. Yeah, seven days. You have to commit to seven days. Okay. You've got to go to Vegas um, between November and February, and you've got to find the best margaritas in Las Vegas. So the idea is you've got to judge them on presentation, on flavor, on you know the quality of alcohol, okay. and you've got to go through the city of Vegas and taste all of the margaritas. So that's part of the gig. They'll pay for your hotel and lodging, and uh, also you know money for margaritas, well, obviously. So, yeah. And then they'll give you an extra four grand to be their official well, margarita. Right this taste I mean, we're this going the first week of January anyway, right, Mitch? Okay, <laughs> yes, so we're going to be at this yeah, yeah. right? We'll be there for CES yeah. anyway. This so. is also from the same company that wants to pay you to find the best show to binge on Netflix. Oh, well, uh, yeah. okay. I, so. Now, I could probably do the latter. Maybe it would be kind of cool to make a hybrid. Maybe Ooh, yeah. both of them. I love that Margaritas idea. and Netflix? Yeah, why not? Instead of uh, Netflix <laughs> and, and chill, <laughs> margaritas and Netflix. Well, it's official. Usher will headline the next halftime Super Bowl show at Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas. The NFL, Apple Music, and Rock Nation confirmed the news with a video featuring the confession singer and Kim Kardashian. Kim made headlines recently when she went to see Usher perform at his residency in Las Vegas at the MGM. The 44-year-old singer thanked his fans and everyone who made the opportunity happen. This will mark Usher's second time performing at the Super Bowl. In 2011, the Grammy winner was a guest during the Black Eyed Peas halftime show. And what a lot of people don't know is that you have to pay to be on yeah. the halftime show and Super Bowl's in Vegas. He's got a residency in Vegas, so it's the perfect fit. Well, not only that, in that day, he is announcing his brand new album release, uh, Coming Home, which is gonna be coming out there as well. Uh, and, and it made sense, like Apple Music, he did the promos for, I'm sure Apple has something to do with making sure that they pay, uh, they pay the upfront charges, yeah. I imagine, on that. Because, I mean, that's obviously the best time to really have the world seeing your sure. product is during the Super Bowl. There's no doubt about that. And that includes the halftime. The last few shows have been a little bit I bizarre. I it's agree. kind of like, I just want to be entertained and show me some music. Yeah, I agree. So there's all that. this hype, and then you see them, and you're like, really? Because it was what, Rihanna and The Weeknd. With yes. the last two. The Granted, the was weekend a little, was a COVID thing. Yeah, but but yeah. even his show was a little bit was out there. I thought Pink. Didn't she jump from the top of the building? I think it was, it was in her. No, it was uh, Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, th I mean, that's impressive. That's yes. the kind of yes. stuff I want to see. Exactly. Right? <laughs> I just got to remember who the artist is. Right? <laughs> well, she has a job that many of us would love, but only one person gets to do. Vanna White has agreed to co-host Wheel of Fortune for at least two more years, and she will be getting a hefty paycheck for her magic touch. The 66-year-old just received a substantial pay increase from her current $3 million a year salary. Word has it the longtime host had not received a raise in more than two decades. Meanwhile, Pat Sajak, who announced his departure from the show in June, has reportedly been taking home $15 million per season. season. <laughs> per season. The pair started working together on the show back in 1982. Now, insiders say White was asking for at least half 
of what Say Jack was making. So it would be about seven and a half million dollars. Everybody's talking about this number one. I, and I say this on the show all the time. You don't get paid what you're worth. You get paid what you negotiate. Bingo. And she hasn't passed 20 years. She hasn't really had done anything. Mm -hmm. And uh, through the years, she doesn't turn letters anymore. She touches them. I love her. I think she is part of the show. I think she's great. But is what I do I tune in just to see her? I, I don't know. No, I don't think I do. I mean, I think the show is what it is, but it would not be the Wheel of Fortune without it. Does that make but sense? But to me, the Wheel of Fortune is Pat and Vanna. Right, right. And not to take anything away from Ryan Seacrest, who will be the new host, but to me, that's kind of the package deal. Like, you tune in to see them because they're just like these two icons and right. part of this game show. 20 years not getting a pay raise altogether. It seems like your agent needed to be doing a better job at something, you know, yes, at least yes. or some kind of uh, a little piece of the action yeah. as well. Uh, and, and then to say, hey, look, I want half of what Pat made at least mm -hmm. is, uh, it, uh, and it came out at a perfect time right around the, yeah. uh, during the writer's strike where they need reality television. And not to take away anything that Vanna does because she is certainly a draw to the show, but to make seven million dollars for touching some no, lights agree. and wearing beautiful gowns i mean more power yes. to her if she can negotiate that bravo so but maybe she realized and yeah. uh to me she seems like she's somebody it's very down home i interviewed yeah. much extremely yes. nice hey, unbelievably yeah. nice she just said you know what i'm happy i don't want to ruffle the yeah. feathers i want the show to be a success also somebody want his product to be a success is elon musk he owns x formerly known as twitter mm -hmm. he said that he might mm -hmm. be charging everyone who uses the social media feed formerly known as twitter Musk said that the company will likely move to a small monthly fee system in an effort to rid the platform of bots. Since Musk took over the uh, platform last year, the company has been pushing its users to subscribe for $8 a month or 84 bucks a year, which is uh, some big cash. Current subscribers can use the edit button, write lengthy posts, and use longer videos. They can also limit ads and highlight certain topics. Verification, along with the blue check mark, is also part of X's new subscription service, which you see in X, that means you're paying to be on there too. So it kind of tells you if you should, you know, when you follow something, hey, this guy's getting paid, his pain to be on this. I would be surprised if more more of these social media companies go this way. I think it's gonna happen. Because yeah. they're, especially with the bot situation, I think he's got a point there, because the bots can get around those stupid captcha things. Yes, that, right. right can, which is crazy. They right? can get a, they can get around a lot of uh, things. So I think you know even charging ninety nine cents a month might be well it, worth it if you can clear out the system. It's the drug dealer concept, which is <laughs> give it to them free. Yeah. They need it, they want it, yes. then you make them pay for it. Right, and free for ten. And years. it's like the binging of television shows. You used to be able to binge yeah. all the episodes; they'd release them all at once. Now, have you noticed they've scaled all of that back, and it's just one episode a week? Hey, I, where are you at on that? I, I kind of like it because it gives me something look forward yes. to but it's those weekends where I'm like man I ain't got nothing to do I would love exactly. I, I just went through all the suits all a, yep. a eight seasons and then the ninth season's on a subscription service that I don't I'm not gonna pay for it <laughs> yeah. I go well I don't care anymore I don't I care told what you happened. I'd get you the uh, login I know I know yeah, Matt, Maddie's gonna let me use it no so that's good okay. uh, still though I, I think are there some shows that that are do you like that going every week knowing it's like a staple like like Seinfeld was every Thursday I knew I had, it was programming it was what was that? Uh, scheduled programming you yeah knew must that. You must watch TV. Yeah, I, I agree with you because appointment you, television. Appointment sorry. television because you actually get a little bit more out of it. Yeah. Because if you're binging it, sometimes I'll like get distracted and yeah. I won't be as invested. I think HBO does a good job with it with yeah. like uh, uh, Righteous Gemstones. I watch yes. every Sunday to do that, right, Maddie? Yep. All right, a man from India just recaptured his Guinness World Records title in the category of the fastest time to drink a Capri Sun. Fayez Nazer finished his drink pouch in 8.2 seconds, making him the first person to complete that feat in less than 10 seconds. The record requires challengers to begin with both hands placed flat on a table. <laughs> then once the timer starts, they can unwrap the straw and pierce the pouch. We have to put our man to the test. Yep. Uh, we have Matt Doolittle is going to join uh, me. Uh, we're going to go after this and see if you can do it as well. Is there uh, now if, if your Capri Sun it comes with a prepackaged straw? Yeah. Right. The hardest part of it is getting it out. And of it the... says insert straw here, so it and tells I... us where to go. Now, and, and, and... as a kid, I would just go to the bottom, but for the challenge, oh, really? I would just stab oh, it in oh, there. Oh, and... that's interesting. Yeah. I took my glasses off because I can't see that stupid little hole. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't want you to have an advantage. Now, of that, now the timing has to start when, with the straw. The whole kit. The whole thing. So, yeah. so you would go, I'm going to go, we pick up our yes. hands and then we, we take the, we, uh, Yes, you have to un unwrap the straw. And which I have four kids, so I'm mm -hmm. not sure how well I'm going to be able to take this. Thing. All right, you ready? <laughs> okay. What was it, less than 30 seconds? Uh, and four kids, no, because I couldn't, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. take the drink for him. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, eight, eight seconds is the world record. On your marks, get set, go. Okay, Mitch is unwrapping the straw and 
and he is all right, already going. Uh, right. Matt's struggling with the straw. Matt is struggling there. with the straw, but Mitch is already. Ah, uh, Matt has got the straw in. Both gentlemen are. Oh, Mitch has almost got the whole thing done. Matt, you're dripping a little bit over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Down. <laughs> 20 seconds. 20? So much sugar. 20 seconds. 20 seconds. <laughs> I'm going to have some roaring waters a little bit. Oh. Oh. Do you remember? My kid, these came out after I was in school. I mean, and my yes. kids would get these and they'd give it to you and then they'd pop, you go like that and it squirts yeah. all over you. And, yeah, and I did that over here. I was waiting for somebody to come over and do it. Yeah. Bravo, boys. All right, <laughs> I'm going to go pee. I'll be back right after this. Hope you will as well. Welcome back to Daily Flash. I'm Andrea Jackson along with Mitch English. If you use Google Bard, barter beware. Turns out in addition to reading all your email, Bard can also fabricate emails. Joining us to talk about it is Darius Rafian. He is Insider's senior reporter for VC and startups. Darius, welcome back to Daily Flash. Thanks for having me. So for those who don't know, what is Google Bard? Google Bard is Google's answer to OpenAI's ChatGPT, which many people may have heard of, which is a, uh, it's called a large language model. It's a um, AI chatbot that can sort of look and feel like a human. It can, you know, craft a wedding speech or it can help you write an outline for an essay. And OpenAI, which is backed by Microsoft, really beat everyone to the punch in launching a consumer ready large language model, you know, AI chatbot. So Google um, kind of scrambled to answer with this thing called Bard, which most people generally agree is kind of a less good version of ChatGPT. <laughs> a less good version. I like that. Uh, so Bard, we understand, can do a number of things, even compose an email you never sent. How is that even possible? Um, it's possible using a giant complex thing called a large language model, which I'm not going to claim to understand all the ins and outs of, but it's essentially a very big statistical model that can predict what a human might do based on reading millions and millions of existing pieces of data like existing emails. The thing that Bard does differently or what Google is hoping Bard's competitive advantage will be is that it has access to all of the existing Google services like Gmail and your Google Calendar and Google Maps and travel. So they're hoping that it can be sort of like a personal assistant that can integrate seamlessly into your life. Whether or not it's actually going to work that way, I think is yet to be seen. <laughs> when it comes to a level of powerful uh, on the scale, how does Google's AI compare to ChatGPT and, and the others? I mean, this often sounds like a sort of a souped up version of Siri too. It's hard to keep track of them all. Well, and that's a really good point because there is an interesting trade-off where the more powerful it is, the more expensive it is going to be to run on the company side, the more hardware it's going to require, the more you know graphics cards, those sorts of things. So Google's Bard is actually a little bit less powerful than ChatGPT, and they're kind of trying to catch up on that front. Um, but they're also hoping that in some ways that makes it a little bit more manageable. So it's it, there's sort of this trade-off between power and practicality. And Darius, let's talk about privacy because this has been a big part of this AI conversation. Is privacy at this point a foregone conclusion? You know, this is something that uh, obviously is a very prominent issue here. Google already has a lot of sort of privacy concerns built into its very business model. Um, and there has already been some issues of conversations with Bard ending up in Google search without them being intended to. Now, Google has really reiterated over and over that, you know, anything that you plug in here is not go is, is going to be protected. It's not going to go in front of human moderators. You don't have to worry about it. They say, you know, ending up where you don't want it to. But I think <laughs> that it's a big unanswered question for any of these large language models. How much of what I'm putting into it is being used to train the model? How much of it is ending up and leaking out into places that I didn't expect? And I don't think anyone has a definitive answer to these questions. Um, I think you know, Google is trying to reassure people, but we'll see. We heard someone ask Bard to read all of their email and analyze them. And then Bard came back and said, be worried about your future. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> I, I'm concerned about yeah. this. What's your response? 
Yeah, I mean, there's also been instances of, of Bard um, creating, hallucinating emails that weren't even in there. Um, I don't think that <laughs> we should place too much stock in the psychological diagnosis of these large language models, because at the end of the day, they are just sort of complex statistical equations trying to predict, you know, the next word in a sentence, much similar to sort of autocorrect on Google, but, you know, a million times more powerful. Um, so these these large language models have been known to, it's called, it's called hallucinating, and they have been known to sort of come up with stuff that, uh, that seems to come out of nowhere. I mean, there was a very famous case of ChatGPT telling a New York Times reporter to leave his wife because it was in love with him. Um, I don't know how much to really, uh, you know, place, how much stock to really place in these, because these aren't, at this point at least, you know, sentient machines. They really are just very complex statistical equations, really. Uh, the key phrase there, you said, at this point. At this point, right. <laughs> well, you know, it's, uh, I'm, I don't think anyone can say exactly when we reach sort of a Terminator uh, post-apocalyptic scenario, but uh, that doesn't seem to be imminent at this point. What are some of the things people are asking Bart to do for them, just out of curiosity? Yeah, I mean, we've we've people have posted about you know asking it to uh, tell you who are the most uh, emailed people in your inbox, um, who are who are you missing emails from? Um, can you craft responses to some emails? Can you plan a vacation for me? Can you uh, tell me um, how I can manage my time better? I mean, people are trying to use it for all these sorts of things, but uh, at least anecdotally, people have written and posted about it being leaving a lot to be desired in terms of seamlessly integrating into people's lives in that way. We just have about 30 seconds left, Darius. How can you disable BARD? Well, um, by uh, default, a lot of these uh, these BARD extension services, which dip into your email and your, your maps are not actually activated by default. You actually have into the settings and turn them on and at this point they're still being called an experiment so um, by default they're not there it's only for people who want to become test subjects in this experiment darius thank you so much for more information on all of this fascinating uh info on bard head to dailyflashshow.com or just have bard do it or just have bard do it yes <laughs> <laughs> very good there you go. It is a frightening future we it, face. It really Mitch. is. And if you just think about this, Google last Wednesday just turned 25 years old. So you can imagine what it's going to be like in the next 25. Wow. Welcome back to Daily Flash. In this week's Boss Lady, we want you to meet Mindy Maychak. She is the co-founder of Zen Dogs Therapy Network. Her mission to bring peace, joy, and tail wagging love to those who need it most. Please welcome Mindy Maychak to Daily Flash, along with Woody, one of her wonderful <laughs> dogs. Mindy, how are you? I'm great. How are you this morning? Very good. So let me start with this question. How did you first get involved with therapy dogs? All right, well, um, my husband was in the hospital. He needed to have a, a double lung transplant. So we were having a particularly challenging day and uh, I needed to kind of regroup. So I, I left the room, I went down in the lobby of the hospital and there was a woman standing down there and she had a therapy dog and she said, hey, do you want to pat my dog? And I said, well, sure. So I went over and I patted the dog and it instantly took me to a lot better place. I was able to collect my thoughts and focus on, you know, what we were dealing at hand there. So um, I decided right then when um, I got another dog, I was going to train it to be a therapy dog so I could actually give back to the hospital that had given me eight extra years with my husband. Ah, oh, that's a terrific story. You've got Woody right there in your lap. What makes Woody <laughs> such a good therapy dog? Tell us about him. Oh, she... Well, first of all, she loves, loves people. Um, you know, you can't really train a dog to want to go up to people. You can make them comfortable with it, but they they, they need to want to have that attention from strangers. Um, she's uh, very loving. She's very intuitive. Um, she's, and I've trained her, you know, it, it's, uh, a long process to kind of train them. Uh, you need to really socialize them and make sure that um, they're comfortable with all different kind of situations. Um, we, I took her to Home Depot and things so that she could uh, 
get used to shiny floors, loud noises, strangers approaching her. But overall, she just loves people. <laughs> oh, that face, it is so adorable. I got to get to this. We've got some video and some images to share with our viewers. Tell me about the work you do in the community. Well, our Zen dogs, um, we all separately do our own thing. I, I do focus on the hospital, but as a group, we do um, a lot with first responders. I don't think a lot of people understand on a daily basis what they see and what they do. So we do try to uh, go to fire stations, um, emergency management. We take our dogs and some brownies. We hang out with them. And uh, if they've had a bad call, they can kind of de-stress and pet our dogs. And we just talk about dogs. Everybody likes to talk about dogs. We do other things. We go to nursing homes. We go to um, a de-stress uh, teen time at the library. We also do community events like um, uh, we've done Out of the Darkness, which is a suicide prevention. Uh, that's that's always a, a tough one, but boy, the dogs get loved on, they get hugged, tears, and you leave and you're just glad you were there for everybody. But our group, we, we really try to outreach wherever we're needed. Why do you think dogs bring such peace to people in difficult circumstances? I mean, just having Woody on this morning just brings like a sense of awe and calmness. You see that face and it just changes the tone or the energy of a room immediately. Right. Um, dogs don't judge. You know, dogs also don't tell. You know, you can sit there and, and you can cry or hold or hug a dog and, and they they don't make any, like I said, judgment on you. Um, I've read a lot of research and it, it also shows, you know, that when you pet a dog, it lowers your blood pressure. Um, it, you know, it, the good hormones, um, oxytocin, it increases that. I'm gonna put her down real quick, she's sliding. <laughs> um, and so I, I've read all of that research, but also, um, I've seen it in action. I was at the hospital, there was a child who was having high blood pressure. She was nervous about a procedure that she was going to have. And I brought Woody into the room and four minutes later, they retook her blood pressure and it was down. So I, I've seen, I've seen people hugging and loving, but I've also seen the physical aspects of what these dogs can do. It truly is incredible. And Mindy, we were seeing video there of you with the dogs on the beach. Is there a specific kind or breed of dog that is better for therapy work? Um, it, it actually, therapy dogs are, it's not breed specific. Our Zen dogs, we have everything from a Great Pyrenees to a, a Boston Terriers. We have Shepherds. We have um, Staffordshire Terriers, uh, Dobermans. Doesn't matter. They just need to really be um, gentle and, you know, have a, a calm demeanor. Um, also, like I said, you know, the training does come into play. They need to be able to respond to a lot of basic commands, sit, stay, heal. We can't have them rushing ahead of us and jumping on people. Very true. Mindy, I want to say thank you for all the work that you do and all the incredible uh, dogs that you share with the people and our first responders in our community. If people want more information, head to Facebook. They've got a terrific page there, Zen Dogs Therapy Network, Mindy Maycheck one of the co-founders of Zen Dogs Therapy Network. Stay with us, more Daily Flash when we continue. Mindy, thank you. Thank you. This is Daily Flash with your hosts, Andrea Jackson and Mitch English. Trending news and entertainment. This is Daily Flash. Hi, everybody. I am Mitch English. I'm Andrea Jackson. This is Daily Flash, your source for trending news and entertainment. All right. You know, back in the 80s, we were talking uh, uh, at the top of the show uh, uh, about appointment television. Yes. And I remember there was one show that came out, and I'm like, this show is not like anything else. It's a, a dramedy. Moonlight. <gasps> yes. Uh, Sybil Shepard so and uh, Bruce Willis on this. It was so basically good. the show that made Bruce Willis yes. uh, a name. Yes. He went on to make Die Hard after that. Which, by the way, uh, if you ever watch the movie Legal Eagles with Robert Redford, yeah. Bruce Willis is a juror in it. And it says nothing. No he's He was an extra. Way. And he's just sitting there the whole time. And they'll, they'll panning back and forth. Anyway. A little Bruce Willis trivia there. I've seen every single movie Bruce Willis has been in, by the way. Uh, anyway, but uh, Moonlight is coming back to Hulu. 
Yeah. So wow. yeah. So you can be able to check all 67 episodes out. Uh, you'll be able to see every shot of uh, uh, of of, uh, of what's her name, Civil, Civil Shepherd, Shepherd, where they put a filter over her. Do you remember them making fun oh, about man. that? Oh man, she yeah. had that Barbara Walters she had filter. Barbara Walters yeah. filter is what they called yeah. it. Yeah. And they and may, there's one episode where they make fun of that. It's the, like they had like a heart open, and she's like, uh, and they're doing the sing, and they would break down the fourth wall on this show yeah. all the time. And she'd go, hold on, wait, wait. And she had like a cheesecloth, and she put it in front of her face. <laughs> they hated each other. They, and they, they hated each other on this yeah. show. But they had such good like, chemistry. TV, on this like show. lure. Yeah, and I remember the controversy around them actually finally getting together toward the end. And Third were season. Like, we don't think that that's a good idea. They like the chemistry. They like the back and forth. And it ruined it. You always wanted. You were waiting on Ross yeah. and Rachel to get together. Exactly. This, you know, and that lasted forever. These yeah. two got together in the third season. When I read this story, I thought to myself, Oh goodness, we're going back in time in the '80s. How much stuff is going to get brought up as cancel culture? I, I, well, yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what I love was uh, Mrs. DePesso and then uh, Booger from uh, Revenge of the Nerds is on oh, it as that's well. Right. Al Jarreau sang the uh, theme song, which actually uh, it, it charted. It was uh, a, yeah. a hit uh, on Moonlighting and uh, 67 episodes. You can check it out on Hulu. You, 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 you talked about Bruce Willis. There's a movie with Kevin Costner where he's the corpse in the casket. Um, oh, boy. Uh, yeah. I'll have to look at this one now. To, yeah. All right, I'm going to Google that one. All yeah. right. And our thoughts, of course, are with Bruce yeah, and Willis. And that's why this, I think this it's coming out right now is because really of where Bruce Willis time. is. This. His wife came out and had an interview yeah. recently. Well, ex-owner Elon Musk says he might start charging everyone who uses the social media feed, formerly known as Twitter. Musk said the company will likely move to a small monthly fee system in an effort to rid the platform of bots. Since Musk took over the platform last year, the company has been pushing its users to subscribe for $8 a month or 84 bucks a year. Current subscribers can use the edit button, write lengthy posts, use longer videos. They can also limit ads and highlight certain topics. Verification along with that blue check mark is also part of X's new subscription service. And I think a lot of these social media platforms are gonna be going this way. When you want a, a different level of service on your social media feed, you're going to start yeah. having to pay more for this stuff. I, I agree, and there's so many that are out there. Um, I always looked at Twitter pre-Elon Musk come by. Basically, it's just an echo chamber mm -hmm. of people that were just wanting to spew what they believe, and people that listen and follow along are like, yeah, yeah, well, it, you're not really learning anything if you're only following the people that you agree with. And it became too political, and I yeah. just quit, kind of got off. I think when he came on, a lot of that po uh, mm -hmm. political stuff went away, and then we also found it was a little bit of persuasion mm -hmm. being used there. It, we, to, uh, the politics of or, or uh, the omission, election. you or know, even omission, censorship right. by omission, where they won't allow you to say something, or they won't allow that particular story on, you know, that social feed. Yeah. But they're also kind of moving into a different direction of posting full-length television shows, you know, videos. I think like, they're going to have to. You've got the Tucker there. Carlson. You've got, uh, I think, Joe Rogan might be heading in that direction for Twitter. A number of these um, high-profile celebrities that are talkers are going to get an hour's worth of a show that on makes, Twitter, and, and you'll be able to to kind of comment along mm -hmm. as you're watching. It yep. as well. Uh, the Super Bowl is going to have ushers this year. One big one, too. <laughs> and Usher. He's going to be headlining next halftime at Super Bowl show in Vegas at Allegiant Stadium. The NFL, Apple Music, and Rock Nation all confirmed the news with a video featuring the Confessions singer with Kim Kardashian. Kim made headlines when she went to see Usher perform at his residency in Las Vegas in MGM. She just made headlines by going there. I mean, imagine that. 44 year old singer thanked everyone who made the opportunity happen. It's going to mark the Usher second time that he's been at the Super Bowl. Back in 2011, he was there with the Black Eyed Peas halftime show. Very cool. Looking forward to it. We are going to get you ready for the holidays financially. Got some great tips, ideas, and so much more right here on Daily Flash. Stick around. What is KSA Entertainment? It's trending news, entertainment, lifestyle, KSA Entertainment, culture, KSA. it's love, it's food, it's family, KSA. it's life, it's shopping, it's empowerment, KSA, KSA Entertainment, it's fitness, it's travel, KSA, it's fun, it's engaging, it's Daily Flash, Daily Flash Latino, life, love, shopping. This is KSA Entertainment. menopause symptoms, you likely think of hot flashes, weight gain, and mood swings. But what about the lesser known complaints like digestive issues and twitches? Joining us now is nutritionist and menopause researcher Andrea Donsky to offer some tips on how to alleviate this discomfort. Andrea, welcome to Daily Flash. Thank you for having me. It's so nice to meet you. So there are three unusual symptoms of menopause. Let's start with the first one, digestive issues. What happens and what can we do about it? 
to over 50% of us experience some type of digestive issue. So it could look like gas or bloating, loose stools, constipation, indigestion, cramping, or just having food sitting in your stomach. So what we can do to help our digestive issues would be to chew our food really well. Chew 30 to 40 times until it's like a liquid or a mush before swallowing. The other thing you can do is take a deep breath. When you take a deep breath, it, it stimulates the parasympathetic part of our nervous system, which is also known as rest and digest. You don't want to eat and drink at the same time. That dilutes our digestive enzymes. And make sure you're getting enough fiber, 25 to 35 grams of fiber a day from our foods like fruits and vegetables, legumes, complex carbohydrates, as well as nuts and seeds. The issue is most of us are only getting about half that amount. So what you can do, you can supplement with something called Fiber Us. Fiber Us is a prebiotic soluble fiber that contains six grams of fiber per serving. It, it completely dissolves in under a minute. You can add it to any food or beverage, hot or cold, and it contains one ingredient. It's called sun fiber, guar fiber, that's it. And it works really, really well and it works quickly. The second on the list is cardiometabolic changes. Talk to us about that one. So as we go into perimenopause and menopause, we might see increased levels of these cardiometabolic changes like blood sugar levels, triglycerides, cholesterol, blood pressure, similar to syndrome X or metabolic syndrome, a common denominator for all of these is prediabetes. So we really want to support them as best as we can. Thymoquin is a black seed oil that's standardized to 3% thymoquinone. Its active ingredient is thymoquinone is the active ingredient that's responsible for many of the health benefits. It's the highest quality black seed oil on the market and it works really quickly. It helps to support these cardiometabolic markers in as little as a few days, including blood pressure in the healthy range. Andrea, let's talk about the third one on the list here, eye twitches and muscle spasms or even cramps. So in general, that's due to a lack of magnesium. So as we go into this phase of life, we're more prone to stress and not even handling stress as well as we used to. When we're stressed, we deplete magnesium. When magnesium is depleted, we become more stressed. So it becomes this vicious cycle. So really taking in magnesium on a regular basis, eating it with from our food, green leafy vegetables, avocado, salmon, and then also taking a magnesium supplement. My favorite is magnesium glycinate or bisglycinate. And the reason why is because it's really gentle on our stomach and we absorb it really well. Andrea, great information. And if we want more information, where should we go? So you can go to my website, which is wearemorphous.com, and you can find me on Instagram and on TikTok at Andrea Donsky. Andrea, thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you, Andrea. Andrea, Andrea. Andrea, Andrea. Hey, we want you to see Andrea Jackson on our website, as well as me and Matt and the whole crew. All you have to do is check out our website at dailyflashshow.com. By the way, you can also go there and find all the things you need that we talk about on the show. We're also on social media. Grab that camera, put it up there to the screen right now. Magic will happen, but you gotta use it. That's that QR code and it'll take you to get you all that information, so much more. We're gonna be talking about your holiday budgeting in our Financially Speaking segment. That's coming up, more Flash, right after this. The biggest gadget show on the planet is underway right here in Las Vegas. More than 4,000 exhibitors are showing off new technology that's going to touch almost every aspect of our lives for years to come. Tech Live columnist Jennifer Jolly joins us. Thanks so much for having me. Let's jump right in with Samsung's just unveiled flagship 65-inch Class QN900D Neo QLED 8K TV. Brilliant picture quality here, mind-blowing sound, all thanks to the latest AI Gen 3 processors tucked inside, helps upscale to 8K and sharpens low-res content to that OMG, I'm right there in real life feeling. You can also connect your Galaxy Buds 2 Pro, use 360 degree surround sound for an even more immersive experience. In the world of health tech, when I'm taking home with me, proclaims custom jet oral health system, basically deep cleans your mouth, gets rid of all kinds of gross disease causing bacteria in just seven seconds a day. You use a 3D custom fit mouthpiece, some 60 jets, pulse water between your teeth and gum line, providing a professional level clean that's proven up to 13 times more effective than flossing. Still brush your teeth like normal, but then pop the little spray tray in. Works like magic. This available now. 
ReadyLand's a great example of AI done really well for kids. They've pioneered these Alexa interactive books where kids can use the voice-enabled speaker to bring certain books to life. You can play games, sing songs, learn to read. Now they're taking it to the next level and letting kids have full conversations with the characters. For instance, your child can name any animal they can think of. ReadyLand works them into a story. This is the company behind safeandsoundai.com. I cannot wait to see what they do next. From kids to super cool cooking, check out the current dual zone grill. This is the first full size electric grill that makes it all so much easier and safer. No open flames, you just set it and forget it on a balcony, outside, anywhere really. It's not as smoky, but you still get all of that traditional flavor. It's Wi-Fi enabled, so think about this. On your drive home, you just tap an app. It's heated and waiting for you the minute you arrive, all ready for you to throw the meat and veggies on, plus zero emissions, so it's better for the planet. This one comes out in February. All right, last but not least, CES is all about more new devices. That creates a need for more and better cybersecurity. Companies like Kaspersky here trying to get ahead of the hackers lock it all down from vulnerabilities and malware most of us don't even know exist yet. For this, take a look at Kaspersky's VPN. It adds an extra layer of protection, preventing third-party tracking and keeping you and your family's personal data safe while you're browsing and gaming online. Works across devices and it's available now. We will be here all week covering all the best going hands-on with the latest and greatest gadgets from CES 2024. Go to my website at techish.com for all the details, back to you. Well, many of us are looking for realistic ways to lose or even maintain weight without all that stress. Join in us now to share some easy and sustainable tips as registered dietitian nutritionist T. Scott Keatley. Thanks for joining us, Scott. So when we're setting up stuff for the new year, we've coming in with a lot of energy. It's good to level set, to take a step back, relax just a little bit, Think about the small things that we can do, that we can fit into our life right now and do them very, very well. That's the key, sustainability. So I would start with using a tracking app. That way you know what you're bringing in and what you're bringing out. MyFitnessPal is a great option for that. It's gonna help build sustainable habits over time. And to help with that, the nutritionists over at MyFitnessPal along with Kate Hudson have developed the Small Steps Big Wins Plan. This is a seven day challenge that gives you the little steps that you need to build that foundation so you can meet your goals. You can go straight to the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store, download MyFitnessPal and get started. We are covering some of the hottest consumer electronics and technology being availed at CES 2024 right here in Las Vegas. Digital lifestyle expert Mario Armstrong, he's on the floor and he's got a sneak peek of some of the exciting products that's headed our way. Hey there, Mario, what has your attention this year? Hey, thank you so much for having me on the Daily Flash. So much has my attention this year. I've partnered with some great brands to show you innovative technologies that you're going to want to have. I'm gonna start with new tech for gamers because gaming is big at CES and LG's Ultra Gear OLED dual mode gaming monitor took it to a new level. This new OLED display features an integrated front facing sound system with speakers hidden behind the panel, creating a three dimensional soundscape with pixel sound technology that eliminates the need for external speakers, saving you valuable desk space. It has a new dual mode feature that lets you instantly change the screen resolution and refresh rate to optimize your experience for the genre of the game that you're playing. Meet the future of home cleaning. Ecovacs has introduced the first whole house cleaning system, the DBot X2 Combo, which adds a handheld plus stick vacuum to the DBot X2 Omni Robot vacuum and mop. You can clean every inch of your home from floors to ceiling, underneath furniture, and hard to reach places. The DBot X2 Combo scrub stains away, can automatically go from hard to soft floors with edge to edge precision. It has hands free maintenance with self charging, self washing and drying, self emptying, and more. Another smart home product is Moen's Flow Smart Water Monitor and Shut Off. It monitors your home's water 24 7 to help prevent water damage. Water leaks rank highly among insurance claims. This device attaches to your home's main supply line, operates in the background for peace of mind, uses AI, it can sense leaks and automatically shut off the water supply if it senses any irregularities, which is perfect when you're away. And you can control, monitor, and track your water usage from anywhere on the app. 
For gamers, ambiance is everything. The Govi AI Sync Box Kit 2 caught my attention. These are smart light strips that reflect in-game colors and respond to actions in the game, creating a more immersive environment. The system utilizes Govi's AI technology to create custom lighting effects. For example, it can identify victorious moments in a game and then match it with a victory lighting effect. You can also personalize the effects and connect it with other Govi lights and devices. Smart Health is big at CES, and the Lathan Wave electric toothbrush is solving a problem that has long plagued the industry, deeply cleaning teeth while still protecting gums. It has an all-new 60-degree oscillation movement combined with 66,000 vibrations per minute for a deeper clean in hard-to-reach areas. Its extra soft tapered bristles enhance brushing comfort and protect the gums. The stainless steel design is seamless and gap-free, preventing debris buildup, and the app offers customized brushing. For everything I just covered today, just head over to bestofces.com. The 2024 CES wasn't just about gadgets. It showcased a shift in consumer electronics. The new stars, products that dominate dirt while mastering ease, intelligence, and smart home harmony. Tech expert Andrea Smith has more. I'm here at CES in Las Vegas checking out some of the latest innovations in floor care technology. This is the Tinco Pure One Station, a lightweight cordless vacuum with an all-in-one self-cleaning station that cleans the vacuum. And this is the Tinco Floor One Switch S7 for when you want to vacuum and scrub up messes. It's two separate products, a cordless vacuum and a floor washer that share one battery. Learn more at Tinco.com. Hey, welcome back to your Daily Flash. Hey, last week we had for yes. our House for Sale segment, there was a, we featured amazing dream properties mm -hmm. that had just hit the market. We had so many people actually wanting to see more of a stunning mountain retreat in Loveland, Colorado. We said, let's bring it back and show you it here again. Check out this 9,100 square foot home. It sits on 140 acres. It features five bedrooms, eight bathrooms, more bathrooms than bedrooms are always a good thing. That seems make. to be the way they're going. I these think days. you're right. It was all uh, built to resemble, if you look at the picture, it's uh, kind of a four season resort. The Remarkable Estate, rather, it's located on an exclusive gated community. And once you step inside, you're met with views from every single window. Tall log beams run the length of the ceilings. It also features inlaid stone flooring and large picture windows. The two-story rock face fireplace is just one of the many features of the great room. The chef's kitchen includes custom flooring and cabinets, Wi-Fi appliances, and two giant pantries. The main level is also home to the primary bedroom with access to a huge deck with incredible mountain views. A two-sided rock fireplace welcomes you into the luxurious spa-like master bathroom and a large closet with lots of built-ins as a plus. Upstairs of the home is three enormous bedrooms, each with its own suite. It's also a large loft and a wonderful library. Lower level, get your gym workout in there. It's got a whiskey bar. I'll have fun with that. Also with a wine cellar and a home theater. And did we also mention, check this indoor saltwater swimming Ooh, pool. You'll also nice. be able to park your cars with an oversized four-car garage. You will also find find a beautiful laundry room on every level. It's listed for a whopping $5,995,000. Be sure to schedule a tour. Enter the address 4650 Indian Creek Road in Loveland, Colorado. Yeah. You could be one step closer to saying, welcome to my new home. I know that, that I think your dad lived out in Colorado for yes. a while. Colorado is one of those places that just, uh, the, 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 number one, you, the, you breathe differently. Yes. You know, when you're out there <laughs> in the mountains and everywhere. I don't think there's an ugly place in Colorado. No. It's such a gorgeous state. The altitude, I think, is part of it yeah. in certain parts of the state. But, uh, you know, spending time there and growing up, you don't really appreciate it. Because you hear people say, I went to Colorado and I never went back. <laughs> so they move there and they stay. Yeah. Imagine having a home like that to where you wake up and you can see that oh everywhere you go. And, the, yeah. and I think I'd probably spend most of my time in the indoor saltwater pool. I'm I, with I, you I would on love that one. That. that does it for our big show. And we want to thank all of you for joining us today. There's part of our crew. Y'all be good or good at it. We'll see you when we look at you.